everyone this is matt welcome back to the channel and today we need to go ahead and get these brakes finished uh, in the last video you saw me finish the drum brakes so i'll put a link uh, somewhere for you to look at that and today really i just there's a few things here i just want to take care of while i'm at this point uh, obviously a full suspension rebuild is on order there's basically no bushings left on this car at this point so before i put the rotor and the calipers back on i want to go ahead and take care of the uh, tie rod end the lower ball joint and uh, the end link which you can't see back there so uh, i think everything's going to come off relatively easily hopefully uh, because most of the bolts here are really just coated in grease and oil so they don't look like they're super rusty however the end link for sure is going to be difficult to get off and I, I messed around with the uh the driver's side and there's just so much rust on there i'm gonna to have to cut them so really you're looking at um more or less uh two bolts to take off this compression rod and they're right behind uh they're pretty easy to get to and and i think they're like i think they're 14 millimeter might be 12 millimeter uh and then of course you got the castle nut on the tie rod end you've got the uh you got the you know the, the nut that goes on the other end of the tie rod to kind of lock it in place that'll just need to be loosened so that i can get the whole tie rod loosened and then there are one two there's four bolts that hold on the uh, ball joint and then there's two bolts right here that kind of hold everything together at the transverse link the primary goal for the day is to not die of a heat stroke it is ridiculously hot here and all my neighbors are panic mowing right now because there's supposed to be some rain coming in the next couple days so i'm probably just gonna put you on time lapse so i can throw some fans on and cool off but really i need to go ahead and get these uh, nuts loosened um, and then the idea is that once you get the ball joint off we can go ahead and disassemble it and i have replacement tie rods replacement ball joints replacement uh, tire uh, uh, sway bar end links so all that will just get replaced with new uh, and I'll spend a little bit of time cleaning these parts. Eventually all this is going to get redone. So I don't want to spend a whole lot of time tearing it apart and cleaning it. Um, particularly when I've only got a couple days to get the car back on the road. So uh, go ahead and put you guys on time lapse. I'm going to go ahead and grab my impact wrench and a few sockets and go ahead and start taking this thing apart. So as you can see, the end link is, I mean, that is just wallowed out from sitting in there without basically any bushings. And uh, I just use that cutoff tool that you saw me use because you have these kind of, I think these are attached, these little washer cups. And just getting that um, oscillating tool in there is way easier than trying to do a, a cutoff wheel and potentially hitting other things. So it's a little bit slower, but it lets you get straight in there and cut that off, it didn't take too much. So I got both of those cut offs from both sides and I threw the parts that I knew I was gonna need in my parts washer to get all the gunk off of them. So these knuckle arms are cleaned up and they're in pretty good shape. The ball joints actually come with all new hardware. So there's four bolts, nuts, and a, a castle nut and the cotter pin, all that stuff, that's all new. Uh, the tie rod ends are the same. They come with all, it comes with new hardware and of course i got lucky i didn't i didn't even know i had these but i'd ordered a whole entire set of um bushings from energy suspension 
And when I went and grabbed the pack to see what was in there, they actually send the end links and everything. So uh, I got lucky there because I didn't order anything. I didn't even think about that when I was doing this job. So I got brand new end links with energy suspension bushings. And I went with Moog uh, parts. The ball joints are gonna be the same for side to side. So that's just one part. But if you're gonna order uh, tie rod ends, make sure you get the left and right. There, there are two different part numbers for that. I'll put links and part numbers and stuff down in the description. The only thing I need to do before I get everything back on the car is get these knuckle arms uh, screwed down to the uh, ball joint. So what we're gonna do is uh, get these oriented and push these through. And we're gonna tighten this down. I'm probably gonna go about 30-ish, 40-ish foot-pounds. Uh, the exact torque specs in the factory service manual, I think it's about 50 foot-pounds. Um, but we're gonna cinch it on there and just be careful. And then we'll come back and get to the final torque. Uh, these are greasable, so once they're installed in the car, I'll put the Zerk fittings on. We can go ahead and top the grease off on all these parts. I'm gonna go ahead and get the ball joints on the knuckle arm, and then we'll get everything back on the car. I also wanted to mention really fast that the only bolts that we're gonna reuse are the bolts that do connect uh, these, um, arms to the strut and I found that one is slightly longer maybe like two three millimeters longer than the other and that was on both sides and I didn't really pay attention as I was taking this apart uh, which one goes where so future me you'll put a, a text box or something and let you know which one goes where but uh, I'm gonna have to experiment because I couldn't see the, anything specific in the factory service manual but just note that one is slightly shorter than the other I don't know if it's coincidence but two of mine are like um, you know, silver, and then two of them are like nickel plated. So the shorter ones are nickel plated. So it's not, I'm not, it's not clear to me if that's intentional or if when they reassembled this at some point in time, that's what they had on hand. But I'll put uh, text on the screen, let you know if it matters. This looks way better than when we started today. So I went ahead and got these greased and you know, you keep filling them up until you start, there's a, you know, kind of a natural way that it releases the pressure. So this one, I could see it swelling. So I feel like it's got plenty of grease in it. And I'll check it again once I get it on the ground. Uh, the end link, I'll have to do the final adjustment with that uh, once I get it on the ground as well. Uh, so I just have it loosely tightened. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty tight right now, but I'll do the final, adjustments once there's some weight on the suspension so it has gotten late again another late night but i'm gonna get my mess cleaned up i've got a few more things to button up on the uh, left hand side and so i'll do that off camera but now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and get the uh, wheel hubs on and the calipers and get the last of the of the brake lines put on and then we can go ahead and bleed this thing I've collected all the parts here i really need to do the front assembly the calipers aren't here but they're they're off to the side and I went ahead and got all my bearings pressed in. The small ones are actually easy just to tap in. Uh, the bigger ones, I did go ahead and use my uh, shop press and they, you know, they, they go right in, it's no big deal. Uh, so they are pressed in and I'll double check everything before and make sure everything's nice and seated before we put it on the car. So I got new rotors attached to the hubs. So those, those are good to go. And I went back through everything I did yesterday and rechecked all the torque on the tie rod ends and all that stuff. So all that's good to go. So I think the next thing we do is go ahead and get the uh, dust shields on. And then from there, it's gonna be packing the bearings and getting the grease on the spindles and all that stuff. And um, I've got, uh, it's 
fairly simple and easy to pack bearings by your hand and I actually kind of prefer it but I got this little gadget sitting around I haven't used it as long as I've had it so it might be a good time to uh, see if I save myself 30 seconds uh, getting that set up so uh, I think get the dust shields on get everything packed with grease and then really getting the hubs back on the car and then from there it's the caliper so I'll go ahead and get you guys set up by the car and we'll go ahead and get the stuff installed That was another painfully long uh, project that literally spanned over the course of months because when I was taking the parts off and assessing what I needed to order and then ordering it and then taking some time away, um, you know, I was working on the car and cleaning parts and all that stuff. So, you know, to quantify the number of hours it is in doing the entire brake system with the handbrake and doing some of the suspension components, I mean, it's, I mean, I just this week alone, I've, I've spent. I don't know, 20, 24 hours out here trying to get all this done. And that's cleaning parts and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, um, now the next thing would be to get this down on the ground. And, you know, I want to probably go ahead and look at the master cylinder, see if that needs to be replaced and get the system bled. And theoretically it could drive. Uh, I don't know if you'll hear it, but it's thunderstorming out now. So we're not going to be going anywhere today, but uh, that'll probably be on the next thing I do uh, tomorrow, uh, which will probably be another video because we'll just roll into another day worth of work. So yeah, um, the bearings, you know, I'll, I'll check those and see how things are once, you know, kind of everything gets the weight of the suspension on. So I've kind of checked the torque on everything to factory spec. So hopefully that's all good. So 
you're all probably asking why would you spend as much time just to put factory brakes back on and, and like i said my goal right now is just to get this thing on the road as cheap as possible um you know in my goal of making this about a ten thousand dollar build this was actually a fairly cheap way to go for right now yes it's not performance yes it's not uh, the best situation with having the drum brakes in the back but for my current goals uh this was re relatively cheap and i'll i'll put a total somewhere so you can guys kind of see what this project all told cost me and then overall status of the budget for the build so yeah i mean <laughs> anything could go wrong but uh i'm pretty pleased with the way everything went and i think taking care of some of these bushings and some of the uh joints i mean they were they were just totally shot so i feel much better about that but uh, yeah so getting the master cylinder done doing the brakes and taking this thing for finally for a drive it's been sitting here on the lift for almost a year and it's been sitting in my driveway for like a 19 months or 18 months before that so i've had this car for two and a half years and it drove the first day i pretty much had it and then never again so we've got the fuel system taken care of we got the brakes all things considered it should drive uh, you know i want to go ahead and do a fl uh, fluid changes and all that kind of stuff so anyway i am completely drenched in sweat and filthy and disgusting and yeah so if you guys have any questions comments all that good stuff leave it down below hit me up on instagram if you guys want to see updates along the way uh, in between videos and behind the scenes stuff or you can contact me there so anyway, it's been a long night. I'm going to see you guys in the next one.